So you know already what I'm going to, I'm going to show you because you leave it every single day. Transportation, as you know it, is broken, right? You saw it when you came here. You see it every day being stuck in traffic for hours. But the problem, if you look at how we arrived there, it's even more crazier, what we call auto mobile. In reality, it's the auto immobile. It doesn't move. 80% of its time, it stays parked somewhere. The, the big lie starts when we go into the uh, reseller, right? When we buy a, 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 a automobile, they sell you an amazing world that is made of this kind of incredible environments where uh, there's uh, empty cities and you're always with beautiful women and you're there and your hair are whipped by the wind. The cities are completely desert and it's amazing life. You and your beautiful new car and you exit the reseller and that's what you get. <laughs> Pollution. No, you can, you can applaud, it's, it's just, <laughs> it can happen, yeah. But it's, you know, you get pollution, noise, overcrowded cities. We thought about a system that is broken by definition. By the time we end the road, it's already full of cars, of single driven cars, bumper to bumper, projected to lose our life. A little minute, after another. But if you're complaining about Paris, it means only one thing. You've never been in China. Guys, these guys are ninja traffic jammers. They know how to do that shit. They are stuck, they've been stuck in traffic for 11 days, okay? I don't even know where, how they went to the restroom. We don't want to imagine that. But this is a problem that is very common, not only in Asia. This is Beijing, yes, in a very good day. Because Beijing in a bad day looks like this. <laughs> Just run over him, probably. But if you, you can say, okay, I don't care. I don't take my car because now I don't have my car. I'm clean. I go to, with the underground. Well, if you look around the world, uh, the scenario doesn't seem to, to improve because, you know, this is again China, people are trying to get out and boom, they're pushed back in. But this is London. I haven't put Paris, just to be politically correct, <laughs> but it would look even worse. These systems are conceived to fail. This is uh, Sao Paulo a couple of weeks ago. This was the scene that you can see every day. I mean, uh, no. There are some countries that fixed it, I have to admit, because Japan, for example, has these guys with white gloves that push you inside the freaking car, and, and that's the solution. But do we want to live like this? I don't think so, right? And then you can look at the trains. This is happening every day in Bangladesh, India, and in the most advanced train system in the planet. But the reality of the fact, look at the airports. Now, 70% of the things we do at the airport, we can actually do it even before we arrive there. And we, everything seems to know where we are going, except your freaking luggage and your basically staring it, I don't know why it's not working, maybe I have to go near here, there's something wrong with this. Um, you're staring your freaking carousel, well, the baggage is promptly delivered in Botswana or somewhere else, but they fix it because now we have shops that resell your things. 11 shops in America, they're open all over the world, and you can buy it back for 70% discount, guys. It's amazing. So it's a deal. You can go there and find your stuff that was lost 10 years ago. So we are designing the system to be failing because then we can create a new economy around it. But if I would say that, you know, almost 15 to 20% of humanity is dying for this, then you stop laughing, right? And if I would tell you, Tomorrow is the last day of your life. Now I started to be worried. Now I start to think, oh my God, oh, 
all the things they haven't been able to do, my wife, my children, you know, that's the last day of my life. Every minute count, right? Well, if you're living in one of these cities, for air pollution, we are living 12, 24, 32 months less than was expected. And we think it's normal. We think we're becoming numb. And, and now they're stealing our life 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, one hour there. And we think it's our existence. But this is not normal. We need to do something. Now, my company started to work on a project a while ago, 2013, two weeks after Elon Musk published the white paper, thinking that there's a new way and a better way to actually solve the problem. Imagine a system that can be actually sustainable because uses technologies that are completely renewable. It can be safe, it can be human-centric, bringing back the value of traveling as a human, not this shit that we have out there. Uh, sorry if I use some French every while and then. Uh, that is based on something else. So we build our cities around cars. How stupid are we, right? And imagine something that also is fast and makes money. Yeah, because there's also another reality that I will show you in a second about our transportation systems. Now, how many of you doesn't know what the Hyperloop is? Praise. We are among friends. I'm not taking it personal. How many of you raise your hand who doesn't know what the Hyperloop is? For example, you see one, two. Okay, there are at least 10, 15 people. Security, remove these bastards. <laughs> the fuck? I'm joking. I have a video to show you um, what the Hyperloop is for the one that didn't really live until now. <clears throat> if I have to stay here. Okay, I get it. I get it. The world is at a crossroads, Audio at the brink of a historic breakthrough in mobility. Connectivity is everything, and now we are ready to connect people by a new form of transportation. It's called the Hyperloop, a system that moves people and goods on the ground at and beyond airplane speeds. And since 2013, Hyperloop transportation technologies has been at the forefront of making the Hyperloop system a reality. And we're building today. Utilizing a combination of existing and new technologies, including vacuum systems, magnetic levitation, linear motor systems, automation, and renewable energy, our Hyperloop system will be both high speed and resource efficient, with a safe and comfortable experience for passengers and cargo. Our system is designed for departures every 40 seconds at a maximum speed of 1200 kilometers per hour. It is capable of moving 164,000 passengers on a single line in one day. Hyperloop TT's technology breakthrough is a next generation passive magnetic levitation system. It's called Inductrack, and it's revolutionizing transportation. Neodymium magnets in a haulback array enable passive levitation over an unpowered but conductive track. And as capsules move through the low pressure environment, they use very little energy en route thanks to the reduced drag forces. The induct track system was tested and validated on a full-scale passive levitation track. Hyperloop TT improved the technology and optimized it for a low pressure environment through testing in our prototype. Beyond induct track, our tech has already yielded 27 patents, with further development taking place in our innovation hubs around the globe. To build this extraordinary system, Hyperloop TT has assembled an expert team of over 800 engineers, creatives, and technologists with unparalleled experience. We're also partnering and co-developing with the best companies in the world. Atkins, Isaiah, Leibold, Carburas, Pacadar, Priestman Good, and Talgo are among the 40 best-in-class partners that are part of the Hyperloop TT core team. All have decades of engineering and manufacturing experience in critical industries like tunnels, tubes, aerospace, aeronautics, vacuum pumps, and pylons. The combined experience of our partners gives us the power to leverage decades of development and save millions in research. That's why our system is already feasible and insurable, according to Munich Re, the world's largest reinsurance company. The original Hyperloop company is about to bring the world closer together than ever before. Hyperloop transportation technologies.
So how we achieved the incredible goal to pass from a white paper to actually building the first Hyperloop, the next 10 minutes I will bring you to this journey. The first good news, and it's a good news, is that we didn't have to reinvent anything. We discovered that the technology that we needed to actually build an Hyperloop were there. Let me explain the, the principle. Imagine to have a capsule, like an airplane, but without the wings. Put this capsule inside the tube, suck out the air from the tube so there's no resistance. Now you can move the capsule from point A to point B at almost the speed of sound using a tiny fraction of the energy. Seems really futuristic. Well, we are building it right now. Now, let me show you the main components of an Hyperloop. First, we adopted a very cool strategy. It's about trying to have the minimum impact as possible on the land. And the technology that we have will actually allow you to do it. You can build it on pylon every 30 or 60 meters. You have a system that is completely silent because we are in a vacuum. And as uh, Yvonne Kegel, our um, NASA scientist, says, in space, they don't hear you scream. <laughs> when you, there's a void, you don't have propagation of sounds. But the, in other, another very interesting aspect is that when you don't bifurcate the land and you build it on pylon, you actually have the land not disrupted, so you can uh, have animals migrate, uh, you can have access to the other side, exactly the opposite of a road or a, a highway uh, or a train. But also we put solar panel on top and why not? We looked at the possibility to actually embed other things, like for example, why don't we bring water we have a pipeline already, you have a solar panel, you can also desalinize the water and actually take it from the sea and bring it to the farmers. Then you can also produce energy, so much energy that you can re-inject it to the grid or give it back to the farmer. And also you can transport bandwidth and mobile phone signals. This is shared with the landowner that right now are not like a Rio, expropriated of their uh, land and their land goes down in price. But this system everywhere we announced uh, created the Hyperloop phenomenon. The land went up in price. In some places like California, 10 times. So we are generator of uh, wealth. The second thing is about the speed. Everybody's talking about speed. What does it mean on our life? Well, imagine a new world. Imagine to be able to connect cities. They are distance 500 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers. Now you can actually, there's a little music if you want, uh, just saying. No? Okay. No, they don't want it. But uh, it was a cool video, uh, by the way. But if you can actually just pull the music a little bit up. No, no, no. Okay, no, we, we are not. So the reality of the fact, this is a project that is called the Great Lake um, uh, area, uh, the, the Great Lake uh, project allow people to actually rethink the entire Ohio, Cleveland, Toronto areas. Imagine Cleveland, Chicago, Toronto connected now at 12, 15 minutes distance. We are working with the government right now. This is the first government in the world, sorry, in America, America that put money on a Hyperloop system. And we are redesigning completely the entire area. Imagine this can connect the main hubs. And they are also looking at building something new in the middle that is completely sustainable. And you are 12 minutes from Chicago and 12 minutes from Cleveland. Where do you want to live? In the freaking congested Chicago or in a place where you can do it 12 minutes in the center of Cleveland. And this is not only place where we are doing this. In 11 countries we are working to redefine human experience. Imagine a world that doesn't need all the cars that we have around and we can use an hyperloop to actually substitute not only like a train but the Next phase will be having capsule that goes out of the tube and actually connect up to your destination. And we're working all over the world to bring this to reality. Now, a capsule is a small thing in respect of a train. A normal train, you try to move as much people as you can, pack them in a place and then move them all together, right? 700, 1,000 people. 
Now, it's good, but let's say I'm in a point A and I have to do point D. I have to stop in point B, point C, point D. Everybody has that, this experience in train, right? Why don't we do something different? We have a small capsule, 30, 40, 50 people. And if we have the technology that allows us to do it, we can depart every 40 seconds. You can load it in seven minutes or less, depending on the project, and you can very quickly depart capsules. Now I'm in point A, and I want to go in point D. I have a capsule that goes in point B. The next one, 30 seconds later, goes point C, and so on, and so on. I can serve directly every point, very capillarly, and having an occupancy of almost 90%. And that means we can transport 300, 4,000 people a day, 64,000 people, uh, uh, sorry, 304,000 people an hour, 64,000 people a day, or in the I uh, capsule, you can arrive at 160,000 people a day, 24 million people a year. To give an idea, from Los Angeles to San Francisco, there are 7.6 million people moving. We can substitute the entire industry of transportation four times with one tube. And this is not only uh, the, the beauty of the hyperloop because you can transport in the same uh, tube freight, you can decide based on demand, or you can stack more than one tube, up to seven. We have 30,000 PSI of resistance in each um, um, pylon, 200,000 kilopascal per square feet for the engineers in the room. So, but also we are redesigning the passenger experience. Why the hell they are classifying us based on classes. This was the 17th century, right? First class, second class, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. We have to rehumanize transportation, bring it back to the origin where the travel was the journey, was the experience. So class free, designed around humans, and we can have a new kind of passenger. We call it naked passenger. No, in France, there's a lot of nudism. No, it's not about being naked. It's about not having uh, anything with you. Your, bio your, your biometry can actually allow you to recognize the person, and you can do safety, security, checking, everything with that. We have the technologies, they are there, we can do that. And using, of course, blockchain, we are working on a big project about that. You can have a frictionless experience, but also base it on your functions. So you're a different person when you go to work or you come back to work, right? You need something different. When you're with your wife, your wife and children, depending on the size of the children, you want them here, near or far away, right? <laughs> so you need different things. We can bring you there with the new technology. We call it augmented windows. We have developed several patents on this. And the concept is very simple. When you look out of the windows, you're looking probably from this size, we will have uh, 10K of uh, uh, pixels, okay? If you design it in pixel, well, we can replicate that windows by using a high definition screen that can actually re position the image based on your, your, your movement. So we give you the perspective. Where do you want to go? You want to see Paris at the time of Marie Antoinette? We can bring you there. You want to go in the future? In the past, we can bring you in space, underwater. It's not only a cool way to transport the people in the future, it's also a new way to monetize people because we discovered that new generation doesn't like to pay. Yeah, that's a study that we did. And that, but it's fine because there are new models that allow everybody to travel for free and maybe use the premium services to charge for the people that actually can afford it. And this is very easy with the iPhone because we have a cost per passenger that is very low. Very quickly, the station is completely frictionless. I give you some advance. Uh, not a lot of people in the world have seen it, so after this I have to kill you, but it's fine. Uh, so you, you enter in the station, it's completely frictionless, you don't have any impediment, every lane, imagine that you have a round shape, we call it dewdrop. Uh, that uh, it's a, a poetic interpretation. Imagine this giant drop, there are three lanes, the capsule arrive at the external lane or speed lane, then they enter in the maneuvering lane in the middle and then they dock in the dock lane. 33 ports, 
people from port number one, uh, 12, 22, loads in seven minutes, and then imagine there's a, a kind of a clock. Uh, one, 12, and 22 departs at minute zero. 40 seconds later, uh, number two, uh, 13, 23, and so on and so on. You can guarantee a throughput that has never been seen by humanity. And you can develop it in vertically, horizontally, and in the next phase, we don't need station. We need only airlocks. The agent comes to us, entering the capsule, entering the hyperloop, go to destination, and then exit. In the last minute, I want to show you why we are so excited. Of course, it's super safe. Safety was our obsession from the beginning. But think about it. It's like an airplane without the problems of an airplane. It doesn't have all the fail points. We are protected by an environment. We don't have weather. We don't have cars stuck in the middle, cows. We can't divert the capsule into a building. And it costs less than an high-speed rail. It costs less to build but one-tenth of the cost to maintain. Because we don't have to electrify anything. We have a laminate of aluminum, and we use a combination of the renewable energy, solar panel, wind, kinetic energy, regenerative braking, and in some climates where the solar panel are not efficient, we use geothermal. The combination allows us to produce up to 30% more energy than we consume. It's not that complicated. Even the rail could do it, we don't know why they're not, but it's fine. Maybe because they're all subsidized. Yeah, one news that I haven't told you is that every single transportation system on the ground doesn't make money. It's all based on subsidies. Good news, every passenger that travels out there is paid by you guys. That's awesome. Um, we also developed a system that is called Advanced Mobility that we are actually developing with the World Economic Forum Advanced Mobility Group to redesign the value chain of travel. Imagine a blockchain that can actually intercept your identity and from there, you, even if you change modalities, you always be part of the same system and solve also the problem of privacy because your data are in a cloud that doesn't belong to anybody and you activate it and deactivate it when you want. So the company that actually gets your data can't even read your data. And that's in a beautiful world that we want to live in because it's finally democratic. The most exciting part of this uh, on my side is how we did it, and I have the last minute, I promise, is that it's the last minute, even a minute ago. So the, <laughs> the beautiful thing that we have done, instead of raising as much money as we can and spend it as much money as we can, we did something different. We did a call to action. We said, whoever wants to join our team, because we don't have all the answers, we will give you stock options. What happened is magic. More than 900 people now are working from 42 countries. They said we are the biggest startup in the planet. I hate this definition. I think we are the biggest effort that humanity did to put together the best minds in the planet. We have people from NASA, SpaceX, Tesla, Boeing, Aerospace, Lockheed Martin, MIT, Stanford. They are working in their companies and are giving us only their best time, 10 hours a week minimum, and we also have retired scientists. We're opening a research and design center. 70,000 hours contributed. We have the best companies that now join our team with the same model. But the beauty of it, even NASA gave us a space agreement with the two top female astronauts that are now our global ambassadors. I run because I'm running out of time. The good news, uh, even the Sheikh, Sheikh Falah bin Zayed Al Nayan, is officially on board our company and is uh, fast tracking our project. The brother of His Highness Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, the ruler of UAE. So, where are we in terms of uh, execution? Well, I have a good news. It's not a project that will be developed in 20 years, as you probably imagine. It's happening right now. We signed 11 deals with 11 sovereign nations. There are various study, uh, various phases of implementation, but there are two particular projects that I want to end up that are particularly relevant. One is Toulouse. Toulouse, the heart of the Airbus Valley. Uh, we selected that as a global, uh, so European global headquarter. And what happening, is happening there is magic. But who could ever think that France had the possibility to have the first hyperloop of history is happening right now. We're building 300 meters of a prototype, full scale, real full scale, four meters. I don't know if you saw the tube 
uh, arriving in Toulouse, it was uh, spectacular. But we have uh, another 1.4 kilometer in construction there. And uh, the um, government of Brazil gave us uh, um, a, a big uh, fund and uh, building. It's uh, 200,000 square meters of building. But what happened, in, uh, this was the inauguration of the building where it was like a rock concert. <laughs> there was 1,200 young people showed up at the inauguration. I don't know you guys, but when I was 28, I didn't go to the inauguration of the, <laughs> of the research and development center. But the great news is that after five years of working on the Hyperloop, we signed the first, um, okay, we signed the first um, agreement, commercial agreement to build the first Hyperloop of history. In Abu Dhabi, within 2020, we're going to build five to ten kilometers for the Expo 2020. You have a great look on this picture. Yes. You look great. And <laughs> thank you. Yeah. No, I don't like to dress like that, but you know, they shake, whatever. But, <laughs> and uh, can someone press, this is not working. Okay, and I have this little video to show you what the Hyperloop will be in Abu Dhabi. And trust me, it's super cool. It is in our nature to move. Humankind has leveraged increasingly better modes of movement and overcome distance across land, sea and sky. The economic growth after every innovation in transport has been astounding. Abu Dhabi in the UAE has for centuries been an innovator of transport for people and goods. Located 145 kilometers away from Abu Dhabi is the historic city of Al Ain, a city of great antiquity. Currently, Abu Dhabi and Al Ain are connected via a highway that traverses the desert, reaching Al Ain in a little over two hours. Imagine making the same journey in 15 minutes with the introduction of a new revolutionary mode of transportation, Hyperloop. The Hyperloop TT system is a capsule within an enclosed tube environment in which air pressure has been drastically reduced. The capsule hovers by virtue of our exclusively licensed induct track system. The Department of Transport of Abu Dhabi, supporting Abu Dhabi Vision 2030, commissioned Hyperloop TT to conduct the world's first complete feasibility study to evaluate the development of a commercial Hyperloop system. The study covered an assessment of the technical, financial and regulatory requirements. The implementation of Hyperloop will showcase Abu Dhabi's aspiration for sustainable and autonomous transport solutions. With departures every two minutes and an unparalleled experience, the Hyperloop TT system is built for the passenger. Next generation design will ensure that the Hyperloop system does not divide neighborhoods and communities. The tube system traversing the stretches of desert is designed with solar panels integrated into its external cladding. Hyperloop will transform the way we live and work by establishing a completely new ecosystem encompassing Abu Dhabi and Al Ain. Hyperloop transportation represents a new era of development for Abu Dhabi and Al Ain, bringing these two iconic cities and their people closer, opening up new experiences for residents and tourists and revealing new business opportunities. So I don't know if you're excited like me, but this is the beginning of a new moment for humanity. Please, everyone that wants to contribute and to join my team, please go to Global and join. There are companies that are trying to predict the future. We are building it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Bibop. So Bibop, you. We, we, must, we must shift to the other slot, but you, you're, planning, you're currently planning an ITO, a $1 billion ITO, and you, within 40 minutes you will be back to speak about that, correct? <laughs> well, we, uh, we can't speak about ICO yet. We are, we are planning to develop a blockchain yes. ecosystem, and then we talk later about ICO. Okay, so okay? you will be back within 30, 40 minutes okay. to talk about this with the founder of Thesos. Thank you very Thank much, you. people. Thank you. You're great. And, uh,